My name is Neil Williams. This year, as we celebrate World Maritimes Day, the team is seafarers at the core of shipping's future. Here with us today from Marad, we have Director of Ports and Harbor, Miss Louise Williams. Miss Williams, how are you today? Fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us. Um, can you give us a brief overview of the Ports and Harbors Division? Definitely. The Ports and Harbors Division is the operational arm of the Maritime Administration Department. Some of our core functions at the divisions are piloting services. We offer pilotage to vessels entering and leaving the ports of Guyana. We also do dredging of the Demar main, main Ship Channel and maintenance dredging alongside verts as requested. We also conduct hydrographic surveys, maintenance of the buoys and the beacons in the rivers and the ports. Um, another function we execute also is the monitoring and approval and in some cases no objections of marine construction within the rivers and forts of, of Guyana. Um, recently, as in a few years back, we were tasked with the responsibility of supervising offshore activities. Um, one of our main administrative functions because you would have realized most of those are technical functions. One of our main administrative functions is monitoring and supervising of capital projects. We have a number of vessels uh, involved in the pilotage service, such as the pilot launch. We have a tug. We also have the dredge, as I, as I uh, indicated before. And so from time to time, we have to maintain them so they are required to, to be docked, and so those are some of the capital projects that we supervise on a yearly basis, in addition to others like the acquisition of spears, or if we need a new launch, the acquisition of steam. Um, has the offshore oil and gas industry impacted the operations of this division? or what and what ha systems has Marit put in place for managing this new sector? Uh, to answer the first question, most definitely. Um, prior to the commencement of the oil and gas industry, we had an average growth rate of vessels calling Port Georgetown, for example, at about 5 to 8 percent annually. With the advent of the offshore industry, we have seen that rate increase to approximately 23% for the past few years. Um, more importantly, we have also observed that the offshore supply vessels accounts for approximately 40% of the vessels calling um, our port. To date, for the year, we have approximately 1,770 vessels, um, which would have called Port Georgetown. Last year, at this time, we had just over 1,500. So you see that is an increase of approximately 17 to 18%. Um, with respect to your second question, we, as I indicated earlier, we have been tasked with uh, supervision of the, the offshore. Mm -hmm. And so we have a unit that deals with all these requests for in-water activities. Because currently the, the foreign flag vessels that are operating or giving support to the FPSO um, would require permits to operate within Guyana waters. So we have procedures. Those procedures are outlined on our website for permitting. We also uh, are required to issue notices to mariners and also nav navigational warnings. In addition to the in-water activities, you are aware also that there is 
the crew lifting activities. We do have similar procedures that they need to follow and all those are listed on our website. So those are some of the measures that they've put in place, albeit limited when you think of the enormous um, amount of activities going on out there. But we're getting there. Um, you would have mentioned that the growth rate went from 5% to 23% just within a few years. Um, is MARA prepared or preparing for, to handle a, a large influx of um, ports and vessels? We really don't have a choice. We continuously strive to meet the emerging and future demands of the shipping community. And so in that regard, like I indicated earlier, we have our vessel, this, the trailer suction hopper dredge Steven, which I did indicate conducts maintenance dredge in the Demerara main ship channel. And so we have over the years managed to uh, move the char data from four meters to 5.7 meters approximately as we speak, that's the depth of the water. Mm -hmm. So you see we can now uh, accommodate larger vessels because we do anticipate larger vessels and increase the frequency of the offshore um, supply vessels. We do anticipate that. In fact, as we speak, the dredge is currently in the dockyard and so there are a number of components that will be, re will be replaced such as uh, dredge engines, the pipes, mm. the drag heads. So hopefully this improves the efficiency of, of, of the dredge so that we'll be able to even acquire more depths within the channel and thereby because obviously outside of the offshore you know there is there will be uh, economic growth and so we see or see that with that would come an increase in trade so larger vessels more than likely will be calling to benefit from the economies of scale okay. all right um are the ports in guyana prepared for the impact of the offshore oil and gas sector um, the offshore needs shore bases to support its activities. We have seen um, the development of at least two. Um, and so they will be supporting the, those terminals will be supporting the offshore. They already are providing services to the, to the offshore. There are others that are being processed also to support the, the industry. Um, what are some of the measures the department has put in place, or is putting in place, I should say, for the emerging future of this oil and gas sector? Um, there are plans in train. In fact, one of our capital projects for this year is the equipping of our MRCC, the Maritime Rescue and, and Coordination Center, to set up a vessel traffic system. This would help in the monitoring of um, vessels within the, the ports and, and, and offshore. What we also need to understand too, with the increase in traffic, there is a need for improved efficiency. Guyana has been the beneficiary of an IDB project, technical cooperation project, enhancing efficiency through port community systems and maritime, sorry, single, um, single windows for trade. Um, both platforms offer an opportunity for us to manage automate administrative project, um, processes, sorry, and harmonize um, port operations and logistics when it comes to vessel and cargo. 
um, operation. So, through a single electronic point. So, this along with our also we're looking to acquire new pilot launches because you're aware that we have we have a fleet that is aged. So that coupled with what I would have mentioned, the acquisition of the, the new pilot launcher coupled with the systems that we will put in place would help us to a great extent uh, manage efficiently the operations offshore and the increase in traffic in port. Um, this year's team for World Maritime Day places great emphasis on the seafaring community. What role does Marit's own seafarers play in this scheme? Um, I think firstly what we, we need to realize that seafarers are for the most part invisible so to speak to, to the ordinary man but they are really the ones that keep the vessels moving. Ours, our crew members on our vessels as I mentioned we have pilot launches and dredges um, are no different. Obviously they are in our waterways and not sailing from coastal or probably country to country but we there is no less favorable treatment given to them as against the ones on our flag vessel, meaning that they must be competent, they must be licensed for the type of vessel that they are operating, and also safety comes first. So we ensure that they are fully protected, they're always, they always have the PPE, there's a personal protective equipment. These we see as core to our operation and to the handling of our vessels. Okay. Um, you would have spoken of the vital role that sea seafarers play. Uh, how would have COVID affected them and what measures are in place now to help them work, seeing that they're so vital to the industry? Um, we know that the pandemic has caused tremendous hardship around the world and seafarers, I must say, would have endured a lot. One, on the one side, those on vessels were restricted because as you are aware, many countries around the world would have imposed restriction, lockdowns, travel restriction, and so they were unable to leave the vessels for extensive period of time. Likewise the, likewise, the ones ashore were unable to board in order to earn the living. Um, the International Maritime Organization has been since the, the start of the pandemic advocating for them to be treated as key workers. And in so doing, then they'll have access to or have priority to vaccination. Um, in Guyana, we, to facilitate crew change, um, it, what we did during the pandemic is to coordinate and collaborate with the port health authorities. So once that request comes in for crew change, the Port Health Authority has procedures that they would follow. Once they give their approval, once they would have followed their procedure and given their approval, then we give no objection for the um, crew to be changed. Is there anything else you would like to share with us about the Ports and Harbor Department? Any plans you guys may have for the remainder of the year? We alluded to before, we have um, projects that we're working on, capital projects that we're working on. And these projects would see, like I said, see us acquiring new vessels, um, constructing or reconstructing or rehabilitating some of the beacons, not only in the Demara River, 
but in the Essequibo and Borobis rivers. So those would aid in navigation, aid the ships in navigation. So those are our plans for the remainder of the year. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Besides just to say uh, happy World Maritime Day to the maritime uh, community, especially the seafarers as I indicated to you, because they're not usually recognized here. Um, so to bring awareness and let person understand that they are the reason for us having even probably these chairs that we're sitting on, right? The, the vessels, because you know vessels are, are large, so most trade, in fact, 80 to 90 percent of the world's trade is done by sea. So you can imagine the tremendous um, burden is placed on that is placed on them. So we, I think, we ought to recognize their work, and I want to wish them all the seafarers in in in, in Guyana a happy World Maritime Day. Thank you very much. Yeah.